We have been looking at words to live by, and we are concluding this sermon series today. I cannot believe a week and a half from now, it will be Ash Wednesday, hosted here. Um, And sometimes I take a sermon series right up to next Sunday, and then I don't feel ready for Lent. And so we're going to conclude today so we can get ready for Lent next week, kind of do a pre-Lenten kind of thing. But words to live by, how to sum up. And I think the best conclusion that we can have to this series is to hold on to the promise that I have eternal life. We said we were forgiven. We say we still stumble. Uh, Maybe uh, we are still tempted in this life and still may may stumble, but God in his mercy and his grace reach out to us. We have eternal life. Say, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. George Bernard Shaw, he once said that he doubted that he could stand an eternity of George Bernard Shaw. Now, I wonder why he said that. Another interesting story perhaps uh, presents itself well. Someone who was not of the Christian faith talks to a minister and says they don't get this whole eternal life thing. They're like, you know, I don't like life now. Why would I want to live forever? That misses the whole point of what eternal life was or is. And I almost titled this sermon to We Will Live Forever, but I thought that might miss the point. It's not just about having life forevermore, but eternal life, that is a segment of it. We do live forever, but the whole idea that eternal life is a fullness of life, it is a better life, it is something that is different from what we have here and now. You know, in the past, I think I've kind of dwelled on, you know, we can have a better life here and now. We are to live into the eternal life that we receive when we, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And today, It's a time to kind of look to the consummation of that eternal life. You know, it's a hard thing to imagine that we are kind of in this in-between stage. But Christ died on the cross. We know that whole story. Christ died for our sins. Christ was raised from the dead, and he raises us to new life. But yet... Satan is left to roam on this earth. We do have temptation. We do have things that that we have to deal with in this life, things that bring heartache and suffering. There will be a day when that will all come to an end. You know, I'm like right with George Bernard Shaw. You know, I, Jolene Willis, don't know if I could stand in eternity with Jolene Willis. And you're not allowed to say amen to that, okay? (laughs) I'm the only one that's allowed to say that. But you know, I stumble. I have faults. I sometimes make mistakes. But you know, that's never going to happen when we go to heaven, when everything is as God intended it to be. You know, the promise of eternal life is not merely the promise that we will live forever, Life must have more than length in order to be meaningful. It must have depth. It must have depth. Let's talk about what that looks like. First of all, life here and now. Um, I see it in three aspects. We talk about body, mind, and spirit. Life here and now, our bodies are still frail. Our bodies are still fragile. Our bodies are still those bodies that God made with the dust of the earth. Our bodies fail us. Um, Even children can fall and break a bone. Our bodies are flesh and blood. They are what they are. They are a part of this temporal world. Body, mind. We all get moody every now and then. We get emotionally tired. Sometimes we don't think right. We don't put facts together appropriately. Sometimes we say the wrong thing. Our minds, body, mind, and our soul. Sometimes we make mistakes. As close as we want to walk with God, we do not do that perfectly. God is still forming and making us. Body, mind, and spirit or soul. 
But when that day comes, we finally will be restored to the perfect image of God. We will not struggle anymore. There will be no, no strife. And I got on this rule with the MISs. There will be no misunderstandings. There will be no miscommunication. There will be no more, this is stretching it, but there will be no more missiles. No more war. No more war. There will be no more divisive lines, no more his and hers, no more yours and mine, no more political division, no more religious divides, no more country boundaries. There will be no more sickness. There will be no need for doctors, nurses, psychologists, or psychiatrists. There will be no need for medicine. There will be no need for the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency. There will be no illegal drugs. There will be nothing that will cause harm, nothing that will be substituted for who Jesus Christ is. There will be no need for the DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, because this is God's world, and this is all God's creation, and it will be protected by its creator. It will be whole again. There will be no need for the justice system because God will be the only judge that is needed. After the rapture, and we read this in our scripture, there is this book of life that will be open and will be read and the names will be, be read and those whose names are in the book of life will enter into eternal life, will enter into heaven. That is where justice will reign because God reigns. There in heaven, every wrong will be made right. There will only be the right and the good. Everything made right. Think about everything that's wrong in the world. As soon as you turn on the news, you hear it. As soon as you open the paper, you see it. In a moment, it can flood into your soul. All of that in heaven with eternal life is made right again. It is made right. There is no wrong, only right. All that causes pain will be no more. Whether it's mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual, it will be no more because all is made right. All will be beautiful once again. You know, there's plenty of debate on the book of Revelation. There is so much in there that we don't understand. And today, I choose to lift up what we do understand. Even theologians debate about, you know, how's this happen and how's that happen? And there's segments within the religious community because of all of that. But the important thing is that God is coming. Jesus is coming again. There is a second coming. It's almost, we are in these in-between times almost like between the Old and the New Testament. When there were those silent years, it's not silent now, we still hear from God, but those silent years between the Old and New Testament, they were waiting for a Savior, they were waiting for a Messiah. And when the New Testament broke forth was with the birth of Jesus Christ. We too wait a coming of Jesus Christ. It's not that first coming, but you remember that scripture we opened with, everything is yes in Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ was born the first time, we can be assured that he is going to come a second time. The second passage that was read for us this morning from John 14, it is Jesus preparing to leave his disciples. His physical presence will be with them no longer, but his promise is, I will come again. I'm going and I'm preparing a place for you, and I'm going to go and I'm going to bring you to be with me where I am. What a glorious day that will be. Not a day to be feared, but a day to be embraced, because everything will be made right. Eternal life, eternal life, eternity. It is the death of the temporal, the things that will pass away, the things that are temporary. It is an inheritance of the eternal. You know, I believe the challenge is to keep perspective to keep eternal or eternity in perspective, to keep the eternal in perspective. To, if, if we believe in eternity, what does it look like to live here and now like we believe in that eternity? 
There's a story. A woman tells how, as a child, she used to visit her grandmother's house. One of the things that she noticed in a very prominent place in her grandmother's bedroom was a suitcase. One day, she asked her grandmother what was in that suitcase and was told it contained her burial clothes. She explained that she wanted to be sure if sudden death would come, that the proper clothes would be handy before she was placed in her coffin. Literally, her grandmother had packed her bag for eternity. Well, you know what? There's a better bag to pack. If we were, that's the kind of a material bag for eternity. But what about a spiritual bag of etern- for eternity? What if you were to be packing your spiritual bag for eternity each and every day? What would go in it? That act of kindness that you kind of spontaneously did in the bag for eternity. The time you say thank you in the bag. The time you offered a smile in the bag for eternity. The time you planned and went out of your way, didn't really have time, but somebody needed something and you did it into the bag for eternity. The phone call of concern that you made into the bag for eternity. The bags that you have packed for eternity. Those things that will last forever. Those burial clothes aren't going to last forever. The material things aren't going to last forever. The spiritual things will last forever, and they will precede you into those heavenly gates. Living every day as if we're packing for eternity. You know, I think the Apostle Paul said it best. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, he says, For me to live is Christ. Each and every day I live, I live for Christ. Christ in me for the glory of Christ. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. To die is gain. We only have something to gain when we pass from this life to the next life. We only have something to gain when Jesus Christ comes, his second coming, and it will happen someday. We only have everything to gain. But let's live like we have that eternity. We pray, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. We are to be God's presence, God, God's kingdom right here, right now. We have that opportunity. And you know, here's one thing that not all religions say like we do in Christianity. We have this life. We have one life to live. We are given one opportunity. This is our life here and now. And we will go from this life into eternity. Let's live for the eternity and for the glory of God. Let us pray. Oh God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, oh God, for the promise of eternity. I thank you for the eternal life that we can experience here and now as we give our lives to you and accept what you did through Jesus Christ. On the cross, he died for our sins We accept that forgiveness and want to live into the salvation that you offer to us. May we live as those who are anticipating your coming, anticipating a day when all will be made right. May we be a part of that key of making things right, even now. May we offer that eternal perspective in all that we say and do. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and for the promise of eternity. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.